Hey guys, you got Crave here with a review of the Ponage Ultra Custom Sim 2 and we'll also go ahead and try out one of its custom covers. So I've been looking to replace my existing Viper Ultimate, not because it's no longer good. I mean, that mouse has really served its purpose, but it's looking kind of old. And with my M42 wireless being my primary now, I was looking for something to go as my secondary. There is the option to go with the Viper Pro, but after having the features of the Ultimate like the dock, I just felt like it was a bit of a step down. Maybe I'll eventually go for it, but maybe in a few months. So I looked for options and found this Ponage. There are variations to this mouse, but I went with the honeycomb design just to keep the weight down. You have some pretty nice features like the kale switches and the sensor being 3370, which is very similar to the M42 wireless. These specs though aren't anything you will notice, uh, whether you're an average gamer or a really good one. I think that for as long as the tech isn't too many generations behind, shape and comfort matter more. Before comparing it to other wireless mouse, I just wanted to show what the mouse looks like when you swap out the covers. It's a completely toolless affair, which was a drawback with the M42 wireless. I chose the metallic bluish shade, which really isn't bad, as it will somewhat match the blue aspect of my ducky board. I really like that the swapping in and out doesn't require any tools. In terms of the physical features and the top side, one thing that I really like about it is that there's a dedicated DPI switch under the scroll wheel. I've always appreciated something easily accessible as there are some moments where I feel like using a different DPI setting or some application or game doesn't really support the settings I prefer. The underside is where you see the skates and everything else is really just simple. You have a switch to basically turn off the mouse, have the RGB effects working, and you also have a switch where the RGB is minimal and limited only to the scroll wheel. Everything else is pretty much standard to most mice of the same style, where the side buttons sit only on the left side or the side by your thumb. Those side buttons are just right in terms of how they're positioned and they aren't too hard to press or reach. In terms of RGB, I really like the style they used here. The LED strip goes around and hugs the curved part of the mouse. It looks better that way as opposed to most design options where it runs on the sides. It reminds me a little bit of the Viper Mini. In terms of the RGB effect inside the mouse, they have it like the wired M42 from Exerfy and I like that. What's not so good about the RGB is that if your DPI setting is different from the RGB settings you have, there will be a mismatch in color. I might have missed a setting or something that could fix that, but there's that strange RGB mismatch at times. While we're on that, you can adjust the colors from the software you can get from Ponage. That software also allows you to adjust other settings along with the polling rate, the liftoff distance, as well as reassigning most of the features and keys on the mouse itself. It's very flexible as it allows you to change profiles based on the game you're playing and basically map the keys along with the profile you want to use. It's really flexible in that regard, which is why the software, while simple in terms of the interface, really makes the mouse a very robust option. Now, when comparing it to other pointers or mice, it has a pretty good shape, but I do wish that they had more back cover options like Exercise. In any case, it's roughly the same size as the M42 and a bit similar to the Viper. I'd say it's a medium-sized mouse that would fit in between the likes of the Death Adder Mini and the Death Adder Pro. Saying that though, there are some distinct differences once you start to use the mouse for a few hours. While the Viper and the Ultra Custom look or kind of look the same from the top, the one from Ponage is a bit narrower. The back end of the Viper at the base flares out more compared to the Sim 2. That's a small difference, I know, but it will be noticeable depending on your hand, especially from a width perspective. You could say that the Ultimate has a snugglier feel for larger or maybe wider hands. I think that's the reason why it was easy for me to sort of choose the M42 wireless over the Viper Ultimate because of the similarity in terms of the shape on that part of the mouse. One other difference is that the back part of the mouse, the part closest to your wrist, doesn't let your palm rest as much as compared to the M42 or the Viper. So while the differences may seem very subtle, when you look at them in pictures, it's those small details that can matter for a long-term comfort depending on the person. So. It really depends on how you hold your mouse and the shape you prefer. I also have the Glorious O minus wireless and I would say that I prefer the shape of the Sim 2 over that. You really have to factor that in as shape really matters depending on your grip style and overall hand size. 
Oh, and before I forget, let's do a sound test before we close or end this video. Well, everything is great in terms of the sound. The scroll wheel is really quiet but maintains a distinct tactile feel for every bump. There's no creaking or squeaking when you press on the mouse. The left and right mouse clicks are a bit louder when compared to the Viper or the M42 wireless but it's nothing obnoxious. The scroll wheel is excellent compared to the M42 and by a larger margin when you compare it to the Viper Ultimate. So in summary, I like this mouse from Ponage as it completes my 1-2 wireless mouse setup. If one goes low or dead battery wise, I can just change it up and swapping to this Ultra Custom Sim 2 is a great option. It's a great mouse with great features and should be a good pick for any gamer looking to go wireless. Thanks for watching guys. Talk to you soon.